All right, the unavoidable moment has arrived. We need to jump into the Grasshopper Honeybee Radiance modifiers and modifier sets. Modifiers are here to add detail and properties to our objects in Grasshopper. Uh, in, in the model, in the honeybee model, like for example, material properties, transmission, refraction, and so on. Basically, we can define materials within honeybee. Modifier sets are is a collection of properties or materials which we can apply to, for example, one room in one work step. That's very handy. It takes a few steps, of course, to set it up, but when as soon as you have it, you can use that and apply it to not just one room, but several rooms, several several rooms, and but you can also save it late for later and use it in a different model. So that's the idea of modifier sets. Before we jump in, I just want to make a shout out. I'm planning to do a a Q and A session, a channel live Q and A session, and. Um, I posted a poll in my in the community uh, tab of this channel, so you might want to check it out and vote what you are interested in. And if you are, if you can't find the topic, you can also suggest something. Since everybody is like spread out over the globe, which is which is quite amazing, so it's gonna be a bit tricky to find the right time and date. But uh, we can make a start, and I might. Uh, I might post another poll to see what what would be the best the best day of the week or time of the week. Honeybee modifier sets. As you can remember, we we're, we're building this model. If you don't know how to build a honeybee model, I would suggest that you go back in this video series and check out the videos about how to build a honeybee model. And then we ran some uh, honeybee radiance analysis like the annual daylight analysis, the point in time, grid based analysis and so on. We also looked into the results and how we can use the data and how we can look at the data in different ways. We haven't yet touched any image based uh, output that that will come up in another video. Um, pretty soon because we are we are actually already quite far within the honeybee radiance uh, section we haven't touched on certain items like for example the dynamic state uh, geometry like movable louvers and stuff like that also haven't touched on shade like dynamic shades like for example trees which lose their leaves during winter and stuff like that uh, quite interesting that might come up in, in more specialized videos today we're gonna talk about this the modifiers the modifier sets and modifiers and uh, in order to do that, I, I want to rebuild a much simpler model because especially for the people who, who don't want to like spend the time and uh, rebuild the entire model and watch the other videos now and just learn about modifiers. Let's have a very simple, simple model where we can talk about it very specific. So that's what we're going to do now. And I will just rearrange that a bit or maybe I just build a complete new, a new script. I will do that probably new document uh, in my viewport I built in my Rhino model I just built two very simple boxes 15 meters long 8 meters wide 4 meters tall just yeah, really something a simple box simple room we make two because we want to look at something in specific here so we have two rooms next to each other that means we gonna create we create exterior walls roofs and ceilings and then we have also an interior wall it's just to see, just for you to see what's going on with that, and um, how this works with the with the properties and so on. I just have two simple windows. That that's my model. Um, sorry, it's very uninspiring, but I think it serves the purpose. And we and then you of course can apply it to a much more detailed model as we have seen in the previous videos. But I think for this, I, I really suggest to just keep it simple. Now we go into Honeybee. We create. Um, we use this tool here, Room from Solids. We plug in the two rooms. Yes, and I want to also add my. I want to add um, this tool here, so you can see the name the names we have uh, windows or well, we can keep it simple for now we just need windows um, copy this here windows are called apertures 
just because they can be they can have different functions and then we apply these two uh, surfaces here we also need to solve the adjacency so we know that this wall in here the wall which touches is an interior wall so we run this and need a toggle we can also look at that now without the Rhino model and uh, it's also good, always good to check if that worked so uh, we could use that now and check if we have interior walls yes we have one mesh which is an interior wall now we apply the window to the room to the rooms that we can do that with um, add subsurface so this just solved the adjacency so to understand that this uh, wall in here is an interior wall and then we add our subsurfaces um, to the rooms and for that we need this we need to add this here now you can see if we now um, visualize that So this is our current model. I can turn this off. I don't want to see that. And we actually want to see the outline. So we know, okay, there's a window and because we want to do an, uh, a daylight study or any other study for the interior space, and we go to exterior another time, but the interior space, um, then we, it's always good to have like a, just a wireframe because we, then we can see what's, what's, what, what the anal analysis looks like inside and um, this is basically my very simple model and we can run a simple analysis here oh sorry i still need to add this i add, need to add my rooms to the to a honeybee model so this is my model and then i need to also in radiance i need to add a, a grid so i can actually do an analysis so it says here i need to have i need to input the rooms and I need to input the grid size. We are in meter, so I will just use a very small number here. Ah, uh, quite, quite a big number, so maybe even bigger, bigger. One meter grid. So the ana analysis doesn't take too long for now. Um, and then, and we can, you can always refine it, of course, then later. later. Then we use this tool here. This basically assigns the grid to the model. So we need the model and the grid and there are also views we come to that later when we look at the image based analysis and then we can run our study and we can for example use a very simple one the daylight factor just need the model and that's it and we can run it so it's actually very quick to set up it's already finished and we can look at the results you can see this is in percentage and it actually shows that there are two rooms in there because you can see the two data sets. And we can actually put that, we can flatten that first, first of all. Eh, that was not a good idea. I'm not sure why it, it need to rerun to in order to flatten that list. What I do instead uh, was a bit uh, the wrong way to do, but um, I just use a data container and put it in between and then I can do the flattening here. It's also easy, possible. So I can flatten it here and I can leave the normal. Of course, now it's rerunning again the calculation. So that's my daylight factor. I will, I will do another very quick video on that separately, just to explain what, what, is, what is it about. But today we talk about the modifiers. I just make a bit more space here in between. So we have our our rooms we solve the adjacency and we have um, our we visualize it with the wireframe actually we don't need that twice it's, we added uh, windows and of course you can add other apertures but for now this let's keep it simple and I think that's where the, this is the first location where we actually try to add um, modifiers so okay so we have um, modifier sets and we have modifiers so what are sets and what are what are modifier sets and what are modifiers 
And what is this first one? It's actually search modifier sets. So they're like pre, pre-made modifier sets for, uh, for Honeybee to to run. And one of these sets is actually already applied on the model. So in order to make any study, there need to be some kind of modifiers applied, and they are just the generic default uh, set is applied to your room. And how can we find out how that why and what? How can we find out what is applied and what is not applied? So there is, as you can remember in Honeybee, there is um, these tools where we can search uh, or highlight, like for example, faces by attributes, Honeybee room by attribute, Honeybee room by attribute and faces by attribute. So this this tool works with rooms. So as you know that we actually move the, our rooms into here, there it solves the adjacency and then the output is again two rooms. So it's still the same rooms, just uh, modified. And then it goes in here and when you look at here, it's also two rooms are actually output. Uh, are they out? So we can put rooms in here and then we can search for the attribute. If you go in here in the Honeybee attribute, room attributes, it actually doesn't show what we're looking for because this is only the Honeybee uh, the, 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 the base settings. But if we go into Radiance, there's another tab for Honeybee uh, Room Radiance Attributes. And if we add this here, then we can actually see what kind of modifier set is applied. If we put the panel here, then we actually get a modifier set, which is called Generic Interior Visi Visible Modifier Set. And I will explain them in a minute what that means. So it's a modifier set, which basically gives uh, adds attributes to all your um, objects for this model, meaning for the apertures, doors, walls, um, ceilings, and so on, and in a very generic way. Tools take so much space. So uh, if we now want to use, if we want to see what's actually on the faces, on the different faces, then we need to uh, first uh, see if we can, we can add I think we can add the rooms, but I'm not sure. Wait, let's let's see. So we have another tool here, Honeybee Face radi Radiance Attributes. If we go here, then we and we select Modifier. There are other things in here. We can search for other things, but now we want to know the modifier. Let's copy this and let's look into this, and then we actually see what's currently applied, and we. We don't need to see more because that's all what we have in the model. We have a ceiling, a generic exterior window, visible 0 0.64, a generic floor 0 0.2, generic wall 0 0.5. So that's basically um, properties or materials, generic materials which are coming from this set. This is the modifier set. So now if we if we um, take the search modifier set and uh, we plug in a panel and can we, then we can see there are four the door, four different basic modifier sets in here and the first one is generic exterior solar modifier set generic exterior visible modifier set there's solar and visible for e exterior and interior and uh, if we now in order to select one there's there's either you um, uh, no, that's not what I want. You can narrow it down. Generic interior. Interior. You can see it already narrowed the selection to do two of them. And then I could write here solar. Then only this modifier set is selected. Now, if I change it here, look at that. If I if I now apply this modifier set to the room, then look what's the output here. So I take this and then uh, here in the room setup, there's actually this uh, a slot where it says modifier set. So there's modifier set, construction set. Construction set comes into play with the energy modeling. So we plug this in here. Didn't want this to run. Let's turn this off. And now you can see now it has changed. It's different, uh, different numbers. Actually, what's what has changed is the exterior window um, solar changed to 0 0.37. That's the material for the window. The other things actually stayed the same. So these are modifier sets 
they actually have more um, you can also you can also um, deconstruct modifier sets so we can also go in here and deconstruct the modifier set so we could go in here and see what's what kind of modifiers are in here that's also possible so we could for example go in here and look at the exterior wall setup exterior roof window and then we can see glass generic exterior wall window solar 0.73 skylight similar this is the same for the operable exterior door plastic door overhead door glass door and so on exterior shade um yeah that's how you can actually look at the setup and more in detail what's in the set <clears throat> There's another way to select it to make it easier to select. I think it's um, actually better to select from the list with a list item, so we can we can run through much quicker. List, and then we can we could have a slider. <coughs> Actually, we don't need four. We only need three because we have we start counting from zero, zero, one, two, three. So we have four items in the list, and then we can select. And we can, if we look at what's in there, we can actually go through. Oh no, we need to unplug this first, and now we can go through in more detail. Actually, the um, exterior has more has more uh, items because it adds the exterior side of the ceiling and the exterior side of the wall to it. And it also has the solar and visible, visible option. So let's talk about that first. So there is actually quite an um, interesting page if you want to learn more about um, radiance and the different uh, tools. It's a bit hard to read this whole documentation, but uh, the Ladybug tools, Honeybee Radiation, Radiance uh, documentation uh, shed some light into the different uh, tools, more from a developer's perspective, I would say, because it's it just explains the, the, the what's in what are the modules and how they basically interact with the software Radiance, because uh, Honeybee is, is actually just a um, it's a tool set which mainly gives an interface to Radiance or and to other um, third-party software um, and we can talk about more in more detail uh, materials and so on in another video but uh, just maybe something very important to say is that the, the these two sets in here so the generic exterior solar modifier set what is the difference so there's as you can see here there are four sets in here right if I plug this in here, there are four sets in here. The exterior solar modifier set, the exterior visible modifier set, gener uh, gen the interior solar, solar modifier set, and the interior visible modifier set. And we just said that, uh, okay, so in the um, exterior modifier set, it's just added uh, the outer kind of material properties of the model. But what is the solar and visible? What's, what does it mean? Solar means, or let's say the visible modifier set doesn't does only take into account the visible light spectrum so if for example if you do a daylight study and you want to measure how much how much light you have uh, in order for you to work or save energy by not turning on any artificial light then you would probably only do a visible modifier set analysis the solar mo the solar modifier set which is the option which is normal is not um, applied by default is actually looking at the entire spectrum of the solar radiation. So if you do a radiation study where you want to measure the sun's or where you want to measure the, um, like for example, you, you want to measure the possible performance of solar panels, then you would use the solar modifier set rather than the visible modifier set. So that's something to, to keep in mind. Uh, or you build your own uh, very specific modifier set. That's also possible. So that's, that's a way where you, on how you can apply the a whole set. And these are just the generic base, the base sets. And I can go in here and you can see at the moment we apply the exterior solar, modif solar, solar modifier set. Um, we can run this analysis so you can actually see the difference. There is a difference. Let's, let's do that here. Uh, we need to just add a, um, a heat map so you can actually see the output. 
Ladybug spatial heat map. We fl we have already flattened the values and we also need to flatten uh, to, to join the mesh because we have two rooms. Mesh join. And we can use the model for that. Uh, no, sorry, uh, the mesh. Let's retrieve the mesh, which is easier because otherwise the, the whole thing runs again. And we add this here, meshes. I can turn off this points. Interestingly, it's shown again. And mesh in here, and now I can run it. Now we're using the generic exterior solar mo modifier set. And um, now if I change that, let's say to the uh, interior solar modifier set, interior, uh, sorry, interior visible set, then you will have different numbers here. That was um, the last one. Or we can use this, this, the number, number, the second one. I'm using the daylight factor analysis because it's, I think it's one of the, it's the fastest. So you can see there's actually a different output if you are um, more interested about the modifier sets, uh, I recommend this page. There is um, explains the modifier sets more in detail and also the modifiers. Uh, it also re-explains what I just said that, um, for example here, the Honeybee default generic interior visible modifier set. Actually, there's another page. It's just, this is the code for it. And note, note that, thanks item Thanks, item free. All objects in Honeybee always have a modifier assigned to them, and there is no need to ever worry about radiance simulation errors resulting from missing modifiers. However, the Honeybee generic interior visible modifier set is not representative of, of, of a particular building standard, and as its name suggests, is intended only for studies of visible light and not full spectrum solar irradiance. It is there is therefore recommended that users make a modifier set that is geared towards the type of study they are running and conform to a standard of an office-wide basis of design. So I think, yeah, I think it's clear. It should be clear. There's different different output. Uh, let's let's unplug that. Um, gonna stop it, and we we look into the other options here. So. So these are basically the modifier sets, and then there are modifiers uh, already pre pre um, general. This is basically the modifier library from Radiance, which we can search here, and we can use this uh, modif um, modifiers already. Plug that, or actually we can search through like this. No, that was wrong. So we could, um, of course, we can plug this in here and see the whole list. And these are basically the generic modifiers we have currently available. And we can we could then uh, use these. Basically, these are not different to any of what we already had in our pre in our current default settings. Um, it's just a list of all the modifiers which are actually in here in these modifier sets. So, for example, if we want to use the generic interior window um, number fourteen, then we would dial 14 generic interior window uh, visual 0 0.88 then we could plug that into our windows here and what that does it actually modifies the generic set with what we plug in here and we can we can check that when we look at faces again. Let's pull that down so we can see it. So at the moment we have the interior windows visual uh, 0 0.88 as a modifier for the windows. And if we now move to 14, then it changes. You can actually see it. Right. Of course, you need to make sure that you choose something which makes sense. But now we actually selected the solar option or version of that window. So the default set is in here, but it's basically changed when we plug in a new material for that for that window. So that's also something to keep in mind that um, although it's something is applied here, doesn't mean that you cannot change it. You can always change it. Or n now instead of like searching for a modifier, we can also create our own modifier. 
and there are a lot of different options. We I won't go through all of these options, but for example, class modifier, you can apply a name, you can um, put a number for the, the, the transparency or the transmittance and a refraction number. And that creates my class modifier. So I could name this, um, let's do it like this. I can apply a name, custom glass transmittance. It's going to be a number between zero and one, a float number. And refraction need to be a number between one and two. Or well, here's, it need to be, I think it's need to be between one and two. So a float number between one and two. Typical, it says actually here what's typical, 1.5, 1. 1. 1.5, 1. Uh, 52 but yeah we can play with that and you can look up refractions and, and transparency for objects online there are a lot of different websites which actually tells you and also on the radiance website you can check it out um, they explain a bit more about these values and then we can use this instead so now if we go back here we can actually see it now we have the custom class and we could write something like i don't know transmittance 0 0.3 you can see now it actually changed and now i'm using my my own specified material so now we basically added our own uh, glass material and we can actually check it out and see how it does it's not much difference really but if we now for example uh, reduce the transparency to like very small yeah, it was a bit too much. Now you can see the distribution looks the same, but look at the numbers, it's very different. We had seven before here. Um, that was that would be more a matter of setting a, a maximum and minimum um, at the output in the legend parameters. We could do this and say, okay, minimum, because this is um, percentage, minimum is zero and maximum is a hundred. Then this will look much, much different, much more different. Now it's actually not this, because it's below 10, it actually doesn't give any light, or it looks as if there's no light at all. So we could change the segment count. That doesn't help much. But yeah, now if we play with this, we can actually see that there is there are difference in the values. I'll leave that. Um, and if I now increase again, let's say 0 0.5, and we can see, okay, there's actually some light coming in. <clears throat> this is the daylight factor, by the way. Um, we can talk about it another time. Now, what else can we do? What else can I show you? I mean, there's actually, it's not that um, big of a deal, really. We understood modifier sets. Modifier sets, we can search pre-made generic sets with the modifiers, search modifiers, we get all the default modifiers. With the modifiers here, uh, sorry, the, the Honeybee search modifiers, we can search what is already in the library, and then we can actually uh, create our own kind of modifiers uh, for the different, for walls, materials, and so on. Let's Let's look uh, at Honeybuy, uh, just basically custom made modifier sets. Well, we, maybe one word further to the modifiers. There are more specific kind of materials you can create. Uh, and we also talked about you can deconstruct modifiers also uh, and deconstruct sets. You can deconstruct subsets, sets, and, and the modifiers themselves. So they're like three hierarchies, three levels of hierarchy. Modifiers, sub modifiers. <clears throat> sub modifier sets and uh, modifier sets and we can create our own modifier set let's try that first let's try that now and then it should be pretty clear well let's first let's first look at the modifier the the, the face modifiers um so what you can also see here no let's 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 continue so basically we understood what what this does we understand now what these do uh, we can create these like different materials. Let's how, but how can we apply these materials later on? 
to the model. So there are these objects here where you can apply a modifier to a face, for example. You could use this and um, let's, we have our generic opaque modifier for the wall and we can call that custom wall. And uh, you need to apply the reflectancy, the, the, the reflection factor and you have also uh, specularity and roughness but these are optional <clears throat> and you can always see what what the defaults are clicking like hovering over you see what the defaults are roughness is zero here so it's very flat very smooth add the modifier here and then we can apply that to our rooms and we can actually do that here yeah and that could go in go into here and then of course it reruns the calculation didn't change much really, but you can see now that we actually applied the custom wall uh, instead of the generic wall material. So that's one way to add um, modifiers. So we saw that we saw on how we can add uh, modifiers to the apertures and we saw how we can add modifiers to the faces. Basically what these objects do, these uh, tools do, they just select the right uh, object within your model or your room and applies the correct or the, 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 the custom material you set. Okay, let's look at into modifier sets. I'm gonna go back. So you can remember that we had, uh, we, we set our custom glass transmittance uh, material directly into the glass into the um, aperture. And we also applied a, a custom wall material to our rooms, to the faces of the rooms. <clears throat> so mod modify sets are help to uh, solve that in one go. So we could, if we use this tool here, modify sets, honeybee modify set, then it has uh, these slots for uh, base modify set, exterior modif subset, um, interior subset, sub face subset shade subset and we could now set an interior subset and an exterior subset so for example we could now set interior modifier subset let's move this all this a bit and by the way this already has a set this has the uh, if i plug this in here and i don't want to rerun this again so if i plug this in here you can see that it's still the same because it hasn't changed the base set the base set is still the same it's the generic default set as as it is in here as it is already in uh, set for the rooms this hasn't changed but now we can adjust the the subsets of, of this basic modifier set so for example now we can set the interior walls uh, that's actually we don't want that we want to select we want to X we want to um, set the exterior modifier set because we want to set the exterior walls, exterior walls. These are the exterior walls. And we can also set the interior walls, of course. Let's do that. Exterior subset and interior subset. Again, it hasn't changed anything because in here, if there is no, if there's uh, nothing coming out of that set, it still assumes that you're using the base modifier set. But now we can, instead of plug this in here, we could now plug this custom wall material into, into here. Oh, that doesn't work, sorry. Yeah. So now we have this material on the exterior walls. And we can use that also for the interior walls. Now, all the walls in the model are custom, the custom wall material. And we can do the same with the glass material. So let's not, let's disconnect the glass material. Modifiers, we go in, into, oh, so we need to have the subface subset and it's a window. We want to change the, the modifier. So we now have um, the custom glass material set here into the window slot and that goes into the sub face subset. Now we have our custom glass again, the custom wall, and we have still the generic ceiling and floor. And we can leave it by that. But you can see now that uh, it's all really just 
different ways on how to uh, attach your modifiers to the model. There are a lot of different ways and this, this is probably the, the most uh, efficient because that I then can you know, plug into any other model or um, any other script and uh, automatically have the same set applied. That's that's pretty much it. I I mean, should be pretty clear now. Again, uh, as I said before, you can deconstruct the modifier set to look more into detail what's in there. You can deconstruct the modifier set interior. You can apply face uh, the modifiers to faces. Apply modifier sets. This is another way to actually do the same move so we could also uh, instead of like applying the modifier set here we could do this we could uh, go to, into the room the rooms into this apply modifier sets and then apply the modifier set and then connect the modifier set so we, if we do this so now we have the generic with all the generic um, materials we can plug this in here and this goes here and then we're back and this is basically the same. Uh, it depends really on what you are testing and how your script is built. And uh, for sure there are there are situations where this comes, becomes very useful. And then, yeah, there's apply modifier, sh uh, apply shade modifier, apply window modifier. And then uh, the last section here is just much more advanced uh, materials. So for example, here you can actually um, select the transmit the trans mittency by the red green and blue channels so there's certain colors certain wavelengths are uh, so you can basically um, treat certain wavelengths of the of the light differently we can go through uh, materials maybe in a bit more detail at some point it's just a very quick word on bsdf on the bsdf modifier this is a modifier which basically uh, which receives, uh, so it's it's just another way of storing data or properties of a material um, outside of, of, of Rhino, outside maybe in a folder where um, uh, you either downloaded XML files with the material definition and you can load it into your script and then use that as your material. It's actually quite explained here, maybe that's, it's important to maybe re re uh, read through, create a bidirectional scattering distribution function, radiance modifier from an XML file. Path to an XML file containing BSF, BSDF data. These files can be produced using the LBNL window software among other sources. I will not go through this uh, now in this uh, tutorial this is like dealing really with materials the material setups um, an xml file is actually a very simple script where all the data or the properties are listed and that can be plugged into uh, into here just copy um, the link okay i think that's 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 pretty much it um what else can we look at next time um so i'm planning to uh, to post another video just to talk a bit quickly about the daylight factor there was a question from uh, one of our colleagues one of our colleagues asked on the channel ask about the daylight factor and if i could go through that and i can certainly do it it's very fast forward and very simple just created one today but i want to very quickly uh do a follow-up video on that what it does and what it is and how it works and and then in the next video if 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 with the modifiers is every everything clear then we can move on into um, visual based analysis creating some renderings you can actually create renderings with radiance yes um, so that's a separate video that might come up next week yeah that's it for today um let me know if any question if i missed something if you still are not clear on how it works let me know and uh, i hope i can help you and solve the problem see you next time